So as we've seen from this initial setup, um, each of these sort of snow, sand, fluid, cloth have different parameters within their source. Uh, initial firmness, hardness and snow. Uh, this one's got volume, preservation, vibration, speed, friction, viscosity, uh, cohesion. Fluid has a, uh, what is it, have a viscoelasticity, relaxation time, surface tension. Don't get that in that one. And cloth has quite a few different parameters, interior volume, tearing, thickness, friction, collision speed, and things like that. Um, so let's just have a quick look at them all together. So we can see the fluid sort of pushing around the sand and then this sort of snow trying to hold its form by being cut by this and obviously the cloth being just moved around like cloth does by the liquid. Um, and just from the start, starting point, these interactions are really cool. I mean, they're, they're really hard to get any other way. You couldn't really get um, cloth interacting with a fluid. Um, I know you can do it with N-particles and N-cloth, but the fluid aspect of N-particles is very, very basic. Um, so just from a starting point, the ability to do this is very cool. Um, right, so we'll go through the sort of parameters. I don't want to sort of spend hours doing this because I know people, someone going through parameters is really boring. Um, but there are a couple of things that we just need to sort of clarify. Um, and what I'll do is I'll turn off sand and the fluid. So just turn off enable. And we'll just look at the snow one to begin with, because we can look at the sort of general parameters of that, which cover most of these, and then we'll skip through and look at the other ones. Um, right, so snow. Um, before, I suppose, actually, what I should say is. One of the first things you'll notice, none of these have a resolution property to them. Um, they have this particle settings, which I'll talk about, but none of them have a sort of uh, resolution for the general quality of the solve, as it were, that we see in sort of in the aero solver, and um, and that's because because they're all part of an integrated whole system of NPM. That is all controlled down here as a master one in the settings. So that's where you will control your detail size to get these more detailed. I had to sort of point that out from the beginning. Right, so back to snow. Usual, general, enable, start frame, end frame. The default on these is usually just to have one frame of it. Um, distribution, volume, or shell, or surface. So the surface of the emitter, or all of it as a whole. Default on this one is whole. Um, then we get these particles per voxel and vox particle display. So if I put that to 0.5, we'll make them smaller. And if I crank that up to say 32, so I've quadrupled it, is that right? Eight times, yeah. So we're getting, let's just hide our emitter for the moment as well. So we're now getting a lot more particles. Um, one of the good things about having more particles is that it doesn't affect the solve. Solve should pretty much go at the same rate. It may get slow if you get a lot more particles in there, but generally it doesn't affect the solve. The solve is being done by a voxelization process, and these are sort of display voxel uh, particles within those voxels areas. So particles per voxels is showing you how many parts you're going to get in what each one of those little voxel cubes. And what's good about that is you can you know, if you just wanted to render out the particle aspect of this, you can do, and you can get it fairly. Let me try one, two, eight. Fairly cheaply, so it goes a bit slower, but not massively. So that's a really good aspect of it. Um, I've done some quite nice renders of NPM, which is just basically doing the particle stuff. Actually, I'll find those for you and show you. Yep, so uh, this is on my own YouTube channel. I've got some Bifrost tests here. Um, so you can see these, that's 
MPM fluids, just whizzing around. Got some nice sort of stuff here with velocity to color, which we looked at last week with particles, and the same here. Got some uh, ring that. We've got some cloths, balloons, some earth, and these liquids. Um, and they're all just particle simulations, but they're using the MPM. Oh, and that one at the bottom is just colour, it's velocity colour, with a bloke sort of whipping through a velocity uh, MPM field, which is quite nice. There we go. Um, right, so you can get some really good results just using the particle aspect of this. Right, so let's have a look at some properties of the snow um, and see the ones that are similar. So density, viscosity, volume preservation, vibration speed and friction, I think we get pretty much in all of them, and cohesion, maybe not in the fluid. No, you don't, but in sand I think you get cohesion. So the density one, as we noticed before when we played the beginning, the liquid pushed everything around a bit more. Um, and if you look, the fluid has got density of a thousand whereas these are 250 so it's a weight so the heavier the weight the more it will push things with lesser density around um, viscosity we talked about four so you want to make it more should go back to snow uh, more treacly more like honey or thicker um, by default here it's put as 0 0.0001 so a very very small amount of viscosity um, volume preservation um, I think it's a 1 to 0, let's have a look, yeah it's a 1 to 0, so 0 means shape preservation, no shape, shape preservation, um, and 1 means volume preservation, so it's shape versus volume. Um, so when pushing on two opposite sides of the block of material, usually the other four sides will bow outwards overall. With volume preservation is set to zero, the material will not expand at all, but only push back against the change in shape. So, at zero, if it gets pushed, it won't deform in the other axes. It won't sort of push out if it's been squished, like I know you're squashing a bit of tofu or something. Um, it will push back on the 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 direction of the the opposite direction of the force that's pushing on it with it set to zero it will bulge out in all the directions um, these parameters are slightly uh, they're quite complicated if you start reading into them because they are again another thing about this if it's proper fully you know certified against real world simulations to behave exactly like snow will do um, now vibration speed is basically um, you can think of it as like bounce. So uh, let's try see if we can get some bounce in it. Um, let's try one. Are you going to see this bouncing? Probably not actually. Well, basically, the higher the numbers. Is it the 50? Um, the higher the number, the stiffer it becomes, the less wobbly. So lower numbers are wobbly. You can't really see it when you're just playing it through like that. Um, so if, you, if you're getting sort of a wobbly looking jelly-like attribute to all of these uh, vibrations, they've all got them I think, vibration speeds, yeah. Um, if you do, if you crank this number up it will make it stiffer. Uh, but be aware, it does state that the higher this number, the slower the simulations. Friction, we all know about. Cohesion is how likely it is to break. So the lower the number, the more likely it is to break. The higher the number. I might actually take some of these down, actually, just so it might be a bit quicker. doesn't want to break so much it is now if I rewind that let's try that 10 
there we go. Sort of slowing down. Is it still breaking? Cohesion. Um, I think it might not work because I might have to play around with the other settings to get it to sort of do not break. You can see it doesn't want to break so much, but it still is ultimately. Let's try that at a thousand and see if it does it. If it doesn't, I think I need to play around with the hardness and the firmness to get it to not break. No, it seems to be. Let's put that back to 0.5. Um, right. So, attribute for snow that we haven't got for another is initial firmness. Um, you can think about snow being packed. You know, the more you pack it, the harder it gets. Um, so, in this sort of initial firmness is a bit like that, how packed it is. So, if you put it to zero, it should just sort of almost act like sand. A little bit, sort of. And if you take the cohesion down to zero, maybe it will act more like sand. So like fine snow. There we go. See that sort of like fine snow now. So that cohesion down to zero and the firmness down to zero. It'll be um, yeah, like dusty snow. And if we crank that up to just jump and check the cohesion number is Value of zero, larger values make the slow come together more, multiple, multiple the current point firmness. Yeah, so the firmness does affect the cohesion. So let's try that together. Um, I'm going to try a big number straight away. And there we go. Just a sort of big solid lump of snow. Um, Bouncing around. Um, so let's put those back to 0.5 and I can't remember what that was by default. Um, they, these don't have defaults at the moment. I think they're going to start installing them in in the next versions. But if you do want to go back to the default, you can always just go uh, snow or find out what the default was and just say, yeah, it's one. So you can just you know, delete that. So a shortcut array around that at the moment. Uh, moving on 12 minutes. Um, Right, so hardening, um, it's probably the last sort of one that's snow related and this is about how it sort of hardens, uh, controls how packing yielding under compression and unpacking yielding under expansion affect the firmness, it's unitless, so smaller values are more ductile, larger values are more brittle, right okay let's, let's give that a go, see if we can get that working. Um, so I'm going to put my hardness up to 50. Uh, let's put this up to 10 and see what happens. I'm hoping for sort of chunking, whether it will work or not. No, let's try I don't know, hardening on that as a large number. You can see yeah, it's hard. So, what I want is maybe let's put that up to one. Leave that at one. Let's see what happens. I sort of want it to chunk up. It might be beyond me demonstrating this. It might be a bit more of a fiddle. Oh, almost. Uh, yep. Oh, bits are coming off. Not quite chunking. Like breaking up. Um, let's try cohesion. Just to double check that one more time. Yeah, so dry snow, so let me do 10, um, and 10. If it doesn't work this time, I might pause it, play around and see if I can get it to do it. Uh, sort of similar thing. Well, let's try this actually. Um, let's just do cohesion. Uh, hundred. Let's do more than hundred. See what happens. Um, what I'm going to do is look at the next ones. Initial speed. It's got a default value of one, but it doesn't have a direction, so it's basically zero. So if I give it a direction, so this is x, y, and z. I'm going to do a minus z. I mean a minus y. So I'm going to do minus one. 
and I'm going to do five. Let's see what happens. Let's do twenty. Boink. There we go. So we can see that with the hardening and the cohesion set quite high and all that. I mean, these settings you'd have to play around with, but obviously I got it to break in half, which is what I was trying to do. Um, so that's the sort of snow settings. Um, inherit velocity, we've seen before, how much the velocity of the emitter it will inherit if the emitter is moving, if it's been animated. Right, so that's snow. I'll stop this and we'll have a quick look at the other ones.